In this episode of Detroit Performs, a Detroit Public Schools historic music program, a textural photographer, and an open air painting fest. It's all ahead on this edition of Detroit Performs. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs. I am your host, DJ Oliver, coming to you from Norwest Gallery in Detroit. Now we'll be learning a lot more about the owner of the gallery, Asia Hamilton, soon. But first, let me tell you about the HARP program at Cast Tech, which has been around for over 90 years. Now we headed to the high school to find out how students were able to learn such a difficult instrument. Take a look. The words that come to mind when I hear the word harp are beautiful, difficult, and underappreciated. It's something that, it, that becomes a passion that you just don't want to release. I began playing the harp in my ninth grade year at Cass Technical High School. It's beautiful to look at. I think it was probably more the aesthetic <laughs> of the instrument than anything else. So um, I said, I'll try this. Cass has the oldest established heart program in a public school, which began in 1925. We've been around for over 90 years, first starting with um, Belma Froud, Patricia Terry Ross, and now currently Miss Lydia Cleaver. Wanting to come back, was the fulfillment of my desire to continue to be a part of the program uh, and to see it go on after Patricia Terry Ross retired. And it was a great opportunity to be able to work with older students and do more sophisticated things musically and uh, just come home, really. Put your thumb on. Harp Ensemble is the class where everybody plays the harp. And then harp and vocal is it's a combination of harp and choir at the same time. And one, two, and three. I came into this class. And I thought it was really hard, like really, really hard, because I've never been in a music class. I didn't know how to read notes, but it got better after a while. In Detroit, uh, unfortunately, we have suffered uh, significantly in the fine arts area in, in our school system. And so when students arrive in my classroom, for the most part, they don't know <laughs> anything about music. So we start from the very beginning. Stretch. Yep. Stretch and slide down a little bit. It's a practical skill. They learn to solve problems in real time. They learn to work collaboratively in addition to being able to apply principles of math uh, they make connections uh, to literature through song. They say that the harp is the hardest instrument in the world. So I feel like you can learn a lot of things from the harp that you can use in life, even if you're not going to pursue music in college or in the future. I think it prepares me for everyday life in the way of not giving up on things because it's really easy to give up on an instrument like the harp because it's hard. It's teaching me to accept challenges and use it as an exercise to better myself as a person. Look, because that time, we didn't have any problem with what chord to play. 
When I see that students can, can learn how to figure something out, that, that is super exciting for me because they have learned patience, how to break something down into parts that you can then put to, together again and create a whole and then actually give life to it to uh, create an emotional aspect of it and then share it with other people. I've never sang come with a harp before harp and vocal, which is very interesting. Watching the harpist play as we sing, it's another form of expression. When we crescendo, they crescendo, and they crescendo, and it's very expressive, and it's very essential in conveying the message and sharing the music with the audience. I find music that is in our library typically that has worthiness that they can't dig some meaning out of. Going home, going home. Today we're working on two songs, one called Steal Away and then one called Going Home, which they're both essentially about um, having peace with yourself and being ready to go to heaven. It's a tribute to um, one of the many songs that slaves used to sing. Three and four. Same freedom for everybody. As a black singer, it's really important to know like the history of the songs. It really helps to convey the message to the audience, to have people relate to it. It means to me that we're doing something good. We're giving people something that maybe they didn't know they needed. I've heard Miss Cleaver play the harp and it's inspired me to keep going with what I want to do and because she's so passionate about it and her passion has driven her to be great that it inspires me to be great in what I want to do. It's incredible like I always like I play it and I'm like, it's nothing compared to her. Like, she can play it right at that instinct and it's, it's beautiful. It's actually very angelic to hear the sound of the harp, especially the way she plays it with such passion. It only encourages us to do, to sing the same way with a lot of passion. Much better, so now. I'm extremely proud of my students. I am extremely fortunate to work with young people who get what it means to be responsible and to grow, um, and they do it through music. After I leave high school, I might go to college to play the harp, and I want to find a way to incorporate harp into mainstream music because you don't really see too many harpists in mainstream. So I want to figure out a way to maybe make a new genre of music or something like that. The experiences that I've had here at Cast Tech have made me grateful for the things that I have, especially with the harp program. We know that we'll have connections with people forever, people that we know if we need something, we can call them up in 20 years from now and we'll know that we'll have support. The great thing about it is that everyone who's come through the program has seen the benefits of it and the beauty of it. They can see, wow, this was really an important part of my life. And so we have that support. And it, it is one of the jewels of the district. It's something that is unique. And um, it belongs to Detroit Public Schools Community District. Now let's learn more about the owner of Norwest Gallery, Asia Hamilton, who also is an amazingly talented photographer. Asia uses her lens to capture the world around her by picking out textures in the urban landscape and connecting with her subject's core beauty. Take a look.
every human being. They have a uniqueness about them that you can grasp with a photograph. Photography saved my life. It was exactly what I needed to do and what I was born to do. I grew up on the northwest side of Detroit. Photography has been a way of being my therapy. One of the things that I want to talk about specifically is how mindful photography is and how it requires for you to take your thoughts and focus on something else. And um, it was a time where my mother, she had um, gotten ill, she had a stroke, and um, I was, you know, in a stream panic and, uh, you know, I needed to take a walk. and. Um, I was just walking around and uh, you know I saw the way this light was hitting the building and the textures on the building and I was like oh my god that's so beautiful and I had to take out my camera and started just taking pictures and it literally took me out of that element and had me focus on something else. The meaning for the textures is just the history behind it. Uh, you know, how did those textures come about? What did those places look like beforehand? And a lot of the portraiture and stuff that I shoot is, um, it's a documentary of history. It is like a way of just remembering a time. And so those textures are bits and pieces of a time that, that has passed. I love to take posed, candid photos. There's always those instances of a, a glimpse of a person. And um, a lot of times when I start to shoot, I'm looking for that in-between, um, just so that I can capture the real essence of a person. There's a photo called West Side. I literally pulled up on these people. There was a father and a son standing outside, and it was the golden hour in photography. The sun was shining, and they looked, it just looked beautiful. I took a picture of them in the midst of asking them, can I take a photo? And I continued to photograph them a little bit more, but it was that first shot that, that got it. For a long time, I photographed a lot of nude women, black women specifically. And um, it was because there really wasn't enough black women being shown in a way that was artistic. And I wanted to present them as beautiful in their body. And that was a learning process for me because I had to become comfortable with myself. The series of mixed media photographs that I did with merging the textures and the portraiture together was really embracing our history, our lineage, how we go through life from beginning to end. You know, those, those textures, all of that information in there, in our being and how we interact with each other. So there is a photo of a man and a woman. They're like my grandparents. Starting there at that unit was pretty much the head of the family. We look to them for our wisdom. And then I have another exact photo of a younger generation, of a young boy and a young girl, because that's our beginning, that's where our start is. There's this one picture, it's just a bunch of kids on the playground. And I was like, hey y'all, come together, get together, let me get a photo of you. And the pose that they gave me was so fierce. That's one of my favorite uh, pictures. You wanna be able to educate people with your work. That doesn't always have to be in the form of, you know, a protest. It can be in the form of just healing the people as is. That's what I do. I, I use it as a way to heal myself and whomever else that comes in contact with it. I love to give back because I had some amazing mentors. I've taught, you know, uh, middle and high school students photography. Um, I started a business called Photo Sensei, which is uh, photography tours and workshops around the Detroit area. Another thing that I've done is open up the Norwest Gallery of Art. Norwest Gallery is in North Rosedale Park on Grand River between Evergreen and Otter Drive. Norwest comes from the Norwest Theater that used to be on Grand River, just on the other side of Southfield Freeway. This is an opportunity for me to create a platform for artists who are emerging, all the way up into strong professional artists that's been doing it for years. It was really a matter of wanting to create a platform and space for people to exhibit and show their work.
express themselves in a way that it's a safe space to just be yourself. I love curating shows. I like to get people to feel. So it's a big part of my art. You know, I, I, I come up with a concept or an idea and just push it to the limit. I select the artists that I think would be able to convey that message in their medium, and it's, it's super exciting to me. The gallery has definitely taken on its, its own life, you know, and it is a necessary place for this neighborhood. I show Detroit how Detroit performs by just being myself. I'm always gonna be Asia in my work, in how I greet people, how I run my space. It's all very calm. When people come in here, they, they're, they're smiling and they're like, oh my God, the energy in here is so good. And that's because I want you to know that I'm sharing a part of my love with you. You know, this is my passion, this is my home. So it's like me opening up my home to you. Now let's check out some upcoming events happening in and around the D. The Florida Keys has an abundance of many things, including lots of fresh air. Just a thing for the inaugural Plain Air Art Fest, where 25 artists take to their canvases for five days of painting in the open air. Plein air painting is based in the French uh, impressionistic style of painting and over the past many years artists have uh, taken on this style of painting where they basically find places they love to paint. Architecture, nature, landscapes, wildlife, they set up their easels and they spend however long it takes for them to capture that image. When we talk with people about Maradaway Arts and Cultural District's Paradise Paint Out, um, we explain to them that we've invited 25 artists from around the country to come to the Florida Keys and to paint from Isla Morada through Ocean Reef, Key Largo. These artists uh, show through their work how they see our beautiful islands. Some are painting along the highway, some are painting in little nooks and crannies, and a lot of locals and visitors have been able to see their favorite artists from start to finish creating these masterpieces. When they are finished with a painting, they bring it to our wet room gallery in the art district and they price their art. We hang it, we show it, and oftentimes we sell it. It's been an extraordinary week. Many, many collectors have come in, identified pieces of work that they'd like to purchase, or walked out the door with art in their hands. I've loved coming down here to paint because the scenery is so inspiring. I mean, I can't help but fall in love with everything that I've looked at so far. So subject matter wise, it's been harder to decide what not to paint. Uh, the upper piece over here is a piece that I actually did at a place called Robbie's and Robbie's I'm sure the locals are very familiar with, but all of the different little venues and tents and everything set up that the vendors have were just tailor-made for subject matter to paint. 
The painting over my right shoulder was one that I did staying at La Siesta Resort. And uh, I went down to the beach one morning and looked back and I felt like the bungalows there sort of were representative of old Florida and all of the palm trees and everything. So it sort of just like was something to grab my attention. And many of them, like I said, have not been here before. So when an artist walks in with a piece of art and we immediately identify it, whether it's a little abstract or not, our hearts are just filled with that appreciation of the Florida Keys of this paradise. I have never been to the Keys before, and so all the more I wanted to, to participate in this event. Of course, where I'm from, it's freezing now. So what's not to like? I come from uh, Rockport, Massachusetts, where I've lived for 34 years and have a gallery there. Uh, originally from Brooklyn, New York, in case you can't tell. I had uh, a number of people here earlier. I tried to entertain them and do a good painting. But I had a class of third graders here. And kids say the darndest things. It usually starts out, oh, what are you painting? Where are you looking? Uh, why are you using that color? And eventually it gets to, do you make money from this? How much do you make? Are you married? You know? So that was the highlight of my day here. Uh, aside from eventually pulling the painting together and uh, uh, being pleased with it. And, and if I'm pleased with it, generally those who are viewing me are pleased with the painting. every time we go to an, a different spot. They each bring their own sort of challenges that we have to figure out how to put into paint. When I uh, arrive at an area, I will uh, scout it out, choose my subject, and I know that somewhere in there is a painting. When I first started this painting, it was overcast. And so I said, okay, that's the deal. My values, in other words, my painting values will be very close to each other. There won't be any drama. But the sun came out when I was about an hour into this. And at that point, it was early enough for me to make a decision. So I chose to convert it to a sunny day. I had to be very careful and very fast because the light is constantly changing and was able to pull it off. Obviously, uh, the sun moves very quickly and all of this was in sunlight soon enough but I didn't follow it. We call that chasing the light. With experience, and I've been painting 50 years, it's frightening. One is able to do that. An inexperienced painter would, would do exactly that, chase the light. And then you would have no painting at all. It wouldn't be here nor there. Uh, that's my preferred method, uh, light and shadow, because it creates drama in a painting. This is Muradaway's inaugural Paradise Paint Out. It's the first plein air paint out uh, that has taken place over a week long period in the Florida Keys. We have big plans for 2016. Next year, this paint out will be juried. Um, we will have a selection committee. The 25 artists have been gracious. They have been helpful and created extraordinary pieces of work and I, was surprised personally by how they really engaged in our community and with our community. We have people here who are asking for these artists by name. The Keys has its own sort of flavor and so being able to, to try to capture that I think is um, one of the things that I enjoyed most. There's a certain vibe here that, you know, the laid back, the casualness of it all, it, it feels good. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Reforms. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitReforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'd like to thank Asia Hamilton for having us here at Norwest Gallery. Asia also does Photo Sensei photography tours for people who want a photography guided tour around Detroit. Check out our website for more information on that. Until next Tuesday, Get out there and show the world how Detroit performs, y'all. I'm DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, 
the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.